What's up YouTube? Today we're going to talk about the different types of wires used in interventional radiology. This is part one of a two-part series where we will focus on the basic structure of wires. Hey, my name is Nico Cardenas and we're back with another FIRE video, Fundamentals in IR Education, where we hope to provide efficient, easily accessible content regarding the field of IR. Let's jump into it. Wires come in a variety of lengths, stiffnesses, coatings, tip configurations, etc. But they all share three basic components. They all have an inner core wire known as a mandrel, around which you have an outer wire that's wrapped, similar to a spring. The third component is known as a safety wire, and that runs in between the mandrel and the outer coiled wire. And it es essentially prevents the outer coiled wire from unraveling. Wires can vary in their stiffness. Flexible wires are good to navigate through small tortuous vessels, whereas stiff wires provide good structural support to advanced catheters and other devices. The diameter and composition of the mandrel will determine how flexible or stiff a wire will be. The mandrel can be made up of either nitinol, stainless steel, or a combination of the two. A stainless steel mandrel will produce a stiff wire that provides good structural support, but is prone to kinking in small vessels. Nitinol, on the other hand, is much more flexible and is less likely to kink, but you lose a little bit of the structural support. Wires can also vary by their tip configurations. Many wires have a soft, atraumatic tip at the leading end of the wire. This floppy tip is created by the gradual tapering of the mandrel, and it can range between one to six centimeters. The longer the floppy portion of the wire, the less likelihood that the wire will cause a dissection. Other wires have a curved end to them, known as a J-tip, and this adds an additional degree of safety. The curved end avoids branch vessels and bounces off plaques instead of digging into them. J-tipped wires are described by the radius of the curve in millimeters. So on the packaging, you'll see three numbers. You'll see one hundredths of an inch that describes the diameter of the wire, you'll see centimeters which describes the length, and then you'll see millimeters which describes the diameter of the loop. And they can range anywhere between three, three millimeters to fifteen millimeters. Wires can also come with a hydrophilic coating. Hydrophilic wires, as the name implies, attracts water, thus reducing friction between the guide wire, the blood vessel wall, and the catheter. Hydrophilic wires have become the most common specialty guide wire used to navigate through tight spots and tortuous vessels. Hydrophilic wires must be maintained wet at all times. When they dry, they become very sticky and difficult to handle. For that reason, these wires are always flushed while still in their delivery container and repeatedly pass through a wet 4x4 throughout the procedure. Another important thing to remember about hydrophilic wires is that they should never be inserted through a vascular access needle because the outer hydrophilic coating can be sheared off by the metal edge when withdrawing. The last thing we'll touch on in part one of this series is wire length, which is measured in centimeters. The standard length wire is 180 centimeters. A 260 centimeter wire may be used when a little bit more purchase is required. Thanks for watching. That wraps up part one of this series. Please stay tuned for part two, where we go into a little bit more detail about each particular type of wire. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the subscribe button below.